And there's our notification. Good morning. Good morning, YouTube. I just need to make sure that we are getting connected over, over chair so we can get our link and send it to the community. Oh, now I hear my, um, my passion. Boom, and it's over there. All right, good morning, good morning. Welcome to Unlock Your First Six Figures Morning Show. I am your host, Shay Cannon. I'll tell you more about that later, but let me tell you what we're talking about this week. We're talking about the top four ways for a small business to be findable, okay? It all starts with the blog. The blog is at shaycannon.com forward slash find, F-I-N-D, okay? Uh, again, I'm your host, Shay Cannon. I'm an award-winning, award-winning fractional chief operating officer with an exclusive clientele of six and seven figure CEOs. However, I have a mission and that mission includes you, entrepreneurs and small business owners who are spinning their wheels and struggling to get to their first six figures in business. I want to help you. I want to show you how to make the money and create time freedom. That's make the money and create time freedom. My freedom looks like living and working my business from everywhere in the world, anywhere in the world, but I am currently in uh, Mexico, okay? Let's get started. Let's get to the value at hand here. Uh, top four ways for a small business to be findable. Why is that even important? Well, we already know that people have to like, know, and trust you to buy from you, right? And so before they can like and know you, they have to be able to find you. Okay. So it is very important that you are findable as a small business. And when we think about that, we really kind of think about marketing, which is a great thing because marketing is what helps people to come into awareness of you. It's what helps the, uh, start that relationship building between you and them. Okay. But, uh, the challenge is that some of us don't know how to get our presence out there, okay? Yesterday, we talked about clarity um, and starting with the clear clear message on our website. Then we talked about SEO, which is hugely important, okay? So catch yesterday's replay for that uh, because, again, SEO is more important than the importance that you put on social media, okay? So these days, you cannot, uh, you cannot, what is the word I want to say? You cannot afford OK, to not know about SEO and to not make SEO uh, an important priority in your business. All right. But today, let's go to the third way. And that is one to many traffic. And we kind of talked about it a little bit yesterday because we're if everything kind of flows into the next thing. Right. So one to many traffic. Go to where your potential clients are gathered in groups. OK, stop trying to just get the, get the attention of one here and one there. If you go to where they're already grouped up. Awesome. Now all you have to do is engage with them where they're already grouped up, okay? So how do you do that? Well, you can be a guest on podcasts and video shows like this show. Um, you can be, <laughs> you can speak at events, right? Um, you can get featured in media. And then guess what? Floating right on in is SEO is also important to be found outside of your website, okay? Because you can lead people back to your website as traffic, when you're being a guest on all of these other places and going to one to many to where your audience is, right? So externally, you can create backlinks. We talked a little bit about this, right? Um, to your website, on social media, on the podcast, in your media features, in your bio uh, for your speaking engagements, in your bylines for your contributing writing, there is always a way to take people back to your website, okay? So in essence, go to where your people are and invite them to visit your home, which is your website, okay? So one to many traffic, one to many traffic. Now, before I ask you ladies any questions, I'm going to go to, so that was the blog post. Uh, let's go and see what Chatty has to say about one-to-many traffic. I asked ChatGPT, hey, what other ways can we be findable using one-to-many traffic without you repeating what I have already told the people, okay? And so they said you can leverage online webinars and workshops. That's another one-to-many, right? In fact, 
uh, Jason Flatland uh, has a book called One to Many, and all he's talking about is webinars. Uh, and um, yeah, really, he's talking about webinars. Uh, so I will put uh, that as a reference in the show notes and on the um, in the group because that is, let me tell you, a great way. If y'all think webinars are dead, they are not. Okay, so webinars and workshops engage in online communities and forums. There are more communities out there than just the one that you're creating, right? So that's another way. They are a part of different communities and different forums out there asking questions. Why aren't you over there answering their questions in the forum and engaging with them in the communities, okay? Uh, collaborate with other businesses, okay? So you can cross promote. Uh, you could be a part of an anthology that you can co-author. You can go in and co-author some blogs. You can get and um, do a, uh, what do you call them? The takeovers, where you can take over somebody else's social media and talk to their audience. I mean, there's a number of ways you can collaborate with other businesses. Think about it also. This is the time of masterminds, right? And, and group coaching. So what mastermind or group coaching has your people in it that you can go and talk and maybe teach and then become known and, and take that traffic back to your own website, okay? Um, utilize social media stories and live features. Go live. Yep. Go live. Live stream. Okay. Go live. All right. Um, online contests and giveaways. Influencer partnerships. Let me tell you how influencer marketing is not going anywhere. It's not going anywhere. But you know what has to change about it? You have to know how to pick the influencer that's right for you. Okay. Let's talk about that for a minute. Because... Just because someone has a lot of followers does not necessarily mean they're an influencer in the way that you need influence, okay? When I'm picking an influencer, I'm looking at are the people actually responding to them in a way that they have influence over them, okay? It's not just, oh, they like what they wear or they like what they do and they're encouraging that person as the influencer. Are they wanting to do what the influencer does? Do they want to buy what the influencer has bought? You know what I'm saying? That's what you need to look for. Um, just because someone has a lot of followers, do they have a lot of engagement? What we know now is you can buy followers, right? People we have, uh, you know, 10,000 followers and then they post something and they get the same amount of comments you get. Well, what we know is you bought those followers, right? So you have to look for not just the follower count, you have to look at what is the engagement, uh, how many reactions, how many comments. True influencers have comments for days, let me tell you, okay? Um, but again, look and see what's being commented. Are they just encouraging the influencer because they like the influencer? Or are they saying, I want to be like this influencer. I want to have what they have. I want to buy what they what they buy. I, um, they, are they actually influenced by them, okay? The next thing I want to tell you about influencer marketing is it doesn't have to be somebody with millions of followers, okay? It could be who is an influencer even in your direct network, right? Guess who's an influencer in studio right now? Dr. Tachi. Do y'all know how many people follow Dr. Tachi? Dr. Tachi is an influencer. Now, I'm not saying go over there and ask her to, uh, <laughs> to uh, tell the people to buy your stuff. But if you qualify, you might could be on one of her shows, right? She is an influencer and she has an entire network. Look at those eyes coming up. <laughs> Dr. Tachi, you might could be uh, interviewed on one of the shows for Indie Soup, but influencer don't always think movie star or somebody that, you know, is famous or infamous. It could be someone in your network who knows a lot of people and has influence over them because those people trust them. Okay. So look in your network, start with your network and see what kind of partnerships and collaborations you can do. Influencer partnerships are not going anywhere. You just got to know how to do them. Okay. Uh, create and share infographics. What we know is um, if you put some good information out there, infographics, I think what has kind of, um, I think we can't say infographics alone right now. Right now, I think you have to say carousels, right? I think you have to say carousels uh, because if you put those carousels out there, you're easily picked up to go on the for you page of TikTok on the, um, you know, the discovery page on Instagram and things like that. So definitely share infographics, but I would do a carousel that starts with the infographic and the next pictures kind of explain the infographic. Okay. Uh, publish research and white papers. That's if you know, upper echelon academic. However, again, you can, uh, publish your own magazine like mine next issue coming out, uh, this month. Um, but you can also be a part of other people's magazines. So you just publish. Okay. Be a part of some type of publishing that goes out one to many. All right. 
uh, attend and participate in virtual conferences. And we already talked about speaking. So not just attending and networking, but speaking. Okay. Because by speaking or sponsoring, by the way, sponsoring is a good one. You get in front of one to many that just going and attending and networking, you still kind of going one-on-one, -on -one, right? But if you go and you speak, that's one to many. If you go and you, um, or if you sponsor, that's one to many. All right. Email marketing campaigns. Guess what? Not just your email list. How can you talk to somebody else's email list? Right? So start thinking about all of these ways that you can be going one to many. So now I am very interested to know, ladies, uh, what one to many uh, strategy are you going to start using to be findable? What one to many strategy are you going to use? Kimberly, I know you might be at the dream funder. You can put it in the comments. Dr. LaFerra, have you made it to where you can come off the mic and tell us what is at least one of these ways you're going to use to be one to many to be findable? Let's see if Dr. LaFerra can come off the mic. You know, we on YouTube, Dr. LaFerra. We can't have no uh, dead air around this mug. Okay, we'll come back to you, Dr. LaFerra. Dr. Tachi, are you available to come off the mic and tell us what is at least one way you're going to use the one-to-many uh, to be findable? I am available to come off of the mic. <laughs> Love it. So I'm kind of already doing the things, being guests on several live streams and podcasts. Mm -hmm. For me, that works uh, really well, but I would like to do more of that. Love it. Love it. Yeah, I understand. I saw Kimberly come off the mic. Kimberly, you seem to be available. Which one to many are you going to start using to be findable? And then again, look, Kimberly might not have even meant to come off the mic. Let's go to Heather. Heather, what's your, your one to many you're going to do to be findable? So I'm a, I do participate in discussions. Like I pop in people's stuff. So I'm already doing that. And I have my um, I have my show on Dr. Tachi's network. Um, and let me I, tell you how I saw you invite an entire group of people. So that was definitely one to many. You invited <laughs> a group of people and a whole huge network of people to come and watch your show. Um, and since you're everybody's cheerleader, I'm sure they should have went over there uh, to help out. So uh, yeah, I love that. Yes, and then um, I do. I've I've been. In my head, it's like, oh, of course I could just go live once a week and do like ask the editor almost anything because I did that for a couple of weeks and I actually got people were engaged and they oh, showed up. So, yeah. So I think I'm going to start doing that again. I love that. Also, I think if you found some forums where people who are trying to write their first book or whatever, uh, mm -hmm. I think that that would be good. Yep. Um, just go in there and start asking questions and build authority amongst that group. Um, invite them to your community, invite them to your website um, and those types of things. So love it. Love it. All right. Dr. LaFerra. Is you ready? Are you ready? I'm not really, but okay. So you said, how am I doing one to many? Yeah. We gave okay. some um, some examples of some things you can do. If you didn't hear those examples, you can tell us how you're already doing it. I guess my emails, but I haven't really been doing a good job with them yet. So I've been um, working on uh, emails uh, this week and I've been um, narrowing down like, because uh, I didn't want to necessarily do that, <laughs> narrowing down um, who I was speaking with. Um, and so the emails, um, when I go live that, um, and I've, I haven't gone live like, uh, you know, in a minute, but, um, I'm going to start doing lives, um, uh, mostly at first in my group. Um, and then let's see, I, I know you said podcast. I don't have one of those yet, but, um, so I'll just listen to some of the other examples that y'all have given. And um, yeah, and, and, and guess what, Dr. LaFerra, you don't have to have your own what? podcast. You can be a guest on other people's podcasts as one to many. Right. right? So find some podcasts to be a yeah. guest on. I don't know if y'all know, but if you just go on Facebook and you search the words podcast guest, there are a whole bunch of 
podcast groups on Facebook that are just about finding podcast guests. I'm um I happen to be a member of a lot of those and I'm about to lean in with that to start being more more of a guest to other people. I just got to do my own recording for my own shows first um before I go mm -hmm. doing too many guest shots and um but yeah, so you can definitely go to um go there and and find ways to be a guest. I mean, and what I'm going to tell you is when your time gets tight, I want you to be more I want you to qualify these shows more, right? But when you're just starting, yeah. I want you to go ahead and get on as many podcasts as you can because you can use podcasts in different ways, right? You can use podcasts mm -hmm. where you're going one to many with their audience and you can also use podcasts where you're using the content to put pump back out to other one to many audiences, okay? So when you're first starting out with these podcasts, y'all, mm -hmm. don't be so hard on... um you know, who their audience is and how many downloads they have and all of that kind of stuff, because it still counts as content for you. Uh, so keep that in mind. But as you get busy, mm -hmm. as your influence grows and your, um, you know, your audience grows, mm -hmm. what you do want to do is be a little more qualifying. Um, you want to look at what is their demographic. You want to look at how many downloads, how long have they been around? Um, how many followers do they have? Are your is it a significant amount of your people within their fellowship or fellowship, right? Um, so yeah, uh, but when you're starting out, I need you to, to just, just get out there, right? And then repurpose that content. Uh, use it as backlinks for your, um, you know, for your website and all of that kind of stuff. Um, because everything can be multi-purpose, right? We as uh, small businesses, everything is not a waste, even though we have to be careful about waste of time and money. Uh, but when we're first starting out, some of that stuff we just have to do and we have to multi-purpose and make it multi-valuable, okay? Uh, over here on Facebook, I'm not Facebook, but on um, YouTube, uh, Dr. Toya says, speaking in front of other people's audiences, I really want to do more guest appearances on podcasts. Definitely, definitely. That's a great one. Um, and don't y'all forget that you can also guest blog, okay? So if there's somebody that you know that your people are in their audience, uh, everybody needs blogs, okay? Everybody needs content. So go ahead and, and even if they've never had a guest blogger before, offer to guest blog, collaborate with them on a, on a topic that shows your expertise and is also valuable to their community, right? So do that. Um, uh, another thing you can do again, I told you uh, earlier, you can do a social media takeover. I've done a couple of those, right? Where um, instead of them coming in that week to do their live or their whatever they did for the week in front of the audience, I did it. And again, don't just find people who are already doing this. Go ahead and be the first one, right? I love to be the first one to do something. That means I can do it the way I want to do it. Okay. So try that out. Um, Dr. LaFerra said, what format should I record my videos for others' blogs? Uh, and by format, I don't know if you mean portrait or landscape, but I would always do landscape unless somebody told, told me portrait. Uh, but, uh, for the blogs, you want to write also, you could do a video in bed, but you most likely want to write when it comes to a blog, because unless they have their blogs set up as a blog, B L O G, then they may not want a video for their blog, B L O G. So when we say blog, B-L-O-G, we're usually talking about something written. Now, hey, I mean, they might have different videos or you, they might allow you to be the first video, but just know when I say B-L-O-G, I'm not talking about videos, okay? But there are video blogs out there. That's how we get vlogs, B-L-O-G, all right? Good question. All right, ladies, uh, let's see what we got over here, over here. So what I want y'all to think about, right, always is, I always ask you what's at least one thing that you're going to do, but I want you to start thinking about how many of the things you can incorporate, because really what it is, is, is it's a checklist. It's not multiple choice, <laughs> right? It's a checklist. We need to do as many of these things as possible um, and not just one thing. So as you're thinking about this stuff, I want you to start thinking about how are you going to incorporate all of it? Now, you don't start with all of it. It's an elephant can't eat it all at once. You can't just swallow all of it, right? So we take one bite at a time. So we look at the whole list and we say, what are we going to start with? What's the easiest for us to get out there and get cracking with and get used to doing, make it our regular thing, right? And then when we get that into our routine, then we go back to the list and we start incorporating more stuff, 
right? So just like you guys, I have a lot of stuff that I need to be doing. Um, I've been a guest, a podcast guest many times, but hey, I've slowed up because I need to catch up with my own recordings. So this month I'm catching up with my own recordings, but next month, <laughs> I'm getting right back into getting out there and, and I'm going to be a little more serious about these podcasts. So just like you in these Facebook groups that are looking for podcast guests, I will be making myself available. Um, and as many as I can get on and fit into my schedule, I'm going to do, um, I'm going to put myself back out there as a speaker. Um, so definitely doing that also. Okay. So this is a both and not either or right. Um, I need to definitely be in more forums because I understand that some of the questions that these are some of the answers to the questions these people are getting are not helpful to them. Okay. I've been in masterminds where people have asked questions, um, and the answers they've gotten back, it, I know didn't help them. So I had to kind of go to the side and be like, Hey, this is what you need to do. Well, that lets me know that in these forums, I need to be present as a, um, as an expert, right? So we definitely, definitely got to go find our people. Uh, we're here to serve. There's more ways to serve them and to get them into our atmosphere to know who we are than it is to just, oh, let me just wait for them to find me, right? Let's go where they are, one to many, to help us be findable to them, okay? Let's, let's, let's spread our wings and go. Um, let's see going live. Well, y'all know, I don't have a problem with going live. However, I don't go live enough. So we'll be going live more. Uh, y'all know, I love a good contest influencer partnerships. I need to definitely work on my influencer partnerships. Uh, if you are in masterminds and in other groups with other people, those other people that are in groups with you are, are influencers in their own rights. You need to be partnering with them. You need to be collaborating with them. Your business besties could be uh, influencers in their own rights, okay? Any, any kind of networking that you do, you need to be networking with purpose. Hey, who do you know that needs me? And also what groups are you a part of that I can come and speak to or collaborate with, okay? And sometimes when you collaborate, um, you don't get to collaborate for free, okay? Just know that. Sometimes there are these paid groups on Facebook that you can go and get in front of their large audiences. Uh, there are also groups that if you go speak to them, maybe you offer a small product and offer the host of that community a commission off of every sale, right? So you got to get creative. You got to get creative. But we all need to be doing all of these things. We're not picking. Um, another thing, carousels. Let me tell you an idea I had about a carousel. So, you know, I have my blog post, you know, I intentionally have this um, separated into three to four sections in that blog post. Well, guess what? That's an automatic carousel right there, right? You got an introductory graphic and then you got a graphic for each section. That's a carousel very easily um, off the same blog. I'm going to tell y'all, if y'all aren't blogging and even just, just copy off my format, right? The introductory paragraph and then three to four sections. You see how they're setting me up to have so much content? I take that and I have a morning show. I take that and I have blog talk. I can take that now and, and create carousels. I take it and I create an email that uh, gives us an a email summary and recap every week or most weeks because uh, like Dr. LaFerre, I got to get right back into my email list. But try to do your stuff in ways that it's multi-purpose uh, and, and therefore it can bring you multiple value. Uh, so ladies, any questions? about one-to-many traffic, or do you have any ideas that have not been mentioned on how you could be one person talking to many people to be findable? Heather's trying to think. <laughs> I see. don't have any other ideas when I'm when I was making that face is because I realized there's so much more I could be doing. Yes. And you know, for me, it's about time management. So Yes. Yeah. I love it. Well, how about you do this then? Because another way to go one to many is press releases. Can you explain to the people how to do a press release? Um, because uh, I just picked up a lot of press off something I haven't even shared yet. And I'm going to sh share my screen and show it to you guys uh, after Heather explains to you what a press release is and how you actually get it into the hands of people who need it. Y'all need to pay attention. People pay for this information. Thank her now. Go ahead. Heather. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, so first, I probably should explain the difference between marketing and public relations. So marketing is basically you're talking about yourself. 
public relations is you get other people to talk about you, which is third party credibility. Because if you think about it, like think about back in the day when we actually read magazines, or maybe some of us still do, um, you can flip past ads, you probably don't remember them, but you remember the stories you read. And so that's the third party credibility. If somebody else is talking about you, it's much more likely to create a no like and trust factor that much faster. Yes. Um, and press releases are essentially little stories that you send to the media. Um, you can send to your local media. That's kind of where my forte is, is getting you in front of like local media is important um, because then you can leverage that coverage, but also your next customer could be a block away from you or on the other side of town, right? Just because you run an online business doesn't mean you should ignore your local audiences. Um, but your press release is also like the gift that keeps on giving because if you use the, the right keywords and you have a couple of backlinks, maybe you can put it on your website and it lives there and then Google keeps indexing it like Shay was talking about yesterday. Also, you can put those local features on your website and link to those greater authorities where your story has appeared or the feature that you were interviewed for, whatever it is, right? So yes. that's the power of PR. I love it. I love it. Now, when they write a, a press release uh, on their own or they reach out to you to get one written, right? Uh, how do they submit it? So my advice for your local media is you have to submit it to the individual uh person. So, and you have to do a little bit of research, right? So TV reporters are a little different because unless like your sports or weather, you are pretty much a general assignment reporter. You could be covering anything from the county fair to a fatal car crash, right? Like it just depends on who's available. So your best, your best uh, bet there is to go, excuse me, with the assignment desk. So you just go online, look up your local news, go to contact us and there should, there might be an online form where you can just fill it out and copy and paste your press release. Mm -hmm. um, in that case, do that. Um, as well as look up the email address of the um, news director and send it to them as well. But they have to be individual. And especially when it comes to print journalists, because print journalists often have a beat. So they could be education, they could be sports, they could be arts and entertainment, whatever. Whatever category your press release falls under, look up those reporters, look at the stories that they've been writing. You don't have to read every one, but just get a general sense of like what they've been writing about and then address your press release to the appropriate reporter. Love it. Love it. Thank you so much for that. Mm -hmm. So y'all just got a masterclass in, in press releases. Uh, and she also just told you how hard it is to uh, <laughs> to get in touch with these people because you don't always know who to get in touch with. <laughs> and you have to do each individual person. So as, as you find them, the correspondence needs to be one-to-one, -one, right? Yeah, so that's why uh, a lot of people pay press release companies who will send it out for you right? Some of them will even write it for you. The one I recently used was called Brand Featured. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Uh, brand Featured right here. So it's brandfeatured.com. I put in, I wrote my own press release. I did a basic package. I wrote my own press release. I sent it to them. So my writing was complete. Uh, they sent the draft out. My publishing was complete. They sent it out and now my, my order is complete. And what they sent me was this. So my article, Fractional Chief Operating Officer Shea Cannon debuts new solution focused on solopreneur business growth. It has been featured in all of these outlets and they even sent me the links, right? So you can pay for people to get your press release out there. You could pay for them to write it for you. But now I have all of these logos. I can now go and add as where I have been featured right? And so some of these are affiliates of the larger networks like NBC, Fox News, and all of that. So now you can use the NBC logo and the Fox News logo, okay? Uh, so that's why I told y'all it's good to have a Google alert on your name. Um, and it's good to Google yourself sometimes because all of this didn't even come up in the Google alert 
Um, so when I Googled my name, you know, so I just kept finding stuff I, and I just kept finding stuff. So if I go over to, let me see if I can quickly find, cause I of course collect my stuff. Let me see. Freelance media contributing. Uh, 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 uh. Let's see if I can quickly find it. Da, da, da. Uh, here we go. Press release distribution. So how it looks on those channels is they took my, so all of them have the same article, okay? So they all have the same title. They have the same tagline. They have the same picture. This is where brand photos come in, y'all. This is why they're important, more than just a headshot. Uh, and then they ha all have the same article. And look at the bottom. They now have my contact information down there, right? And my website. So now I have a back link to my website from all of these authoritative domains, okay? So this is just one of the places, but they each one of those logos, it comes up on their site like this. Okay. So let me stop sharing. Uh, Kimberly said, Whoa, Dr. LaFerra said, wow. Uh, what's the name again, please. Brand featured is the name. Um, and so it's brandfeatured.com. How much was that for the basic? So pack? they had a sale y'all. It was only 197. Oh, um, okay. however, and the 197 gets you a hundred plus of those. And as you see, they delivered. Um, but it's only $297 uh, is the regular price for that basic one. Again, you write it yourself, but they give you the writing guidelines. They give you an example. Y'all can easily uh, put that in chat GPT. Okay. Give it your information and say, Hey, write me one in this format following these guidelines. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. And it I think what's important too is that you included a photo, which I've neglected to mention, but if you have a photo or a short video snippet, that's also really important because especially for your local media, like Shay wanted really wide distribution and that's mm -hmm. fine. If you're like, you know, like Leticia's, I think content, she's going to have to put that on like a service like that. Right. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> but when you, when you send it to your local media, that's where you need that like one-on-one -on -one relationship number one, but number two, uh, journalists are busy. And so they really like packages of material. So picture, video, plus the press release, because they like content, they don't have to produce themselves. So the, the, the more robust you can make your package, the better. Yes. And this is where, again, brand photos come into play, right? Because a headshot alone is, is it's not very compelling. Right. Did y'all see the picture that I used? I use a lifestyle photo, right? A picture of me on the beach. Let's go back to it. Because I talk about how I have time freedom and how, you know, I can work my business from anywhere. Well, guess what? This is a picture of me working. And what do you see in the background? A whole ocean, right? I can work. This is showing you, I it's, it's conveying I can work from anywhere, right? And so that picture is going to be way more compelling than a headshot. And I made sure that in the, in the, um, I said something about that in here. So they dream of a business that consistently generates freedom to spend time. So I put it in here for the exact reason to tie the picture in. So also make sure that your stuff is aligned. Don't just be throwing stuff in there and they like, where this picture come from? And this ain't got nothing to do with what was said in the article, right? So because I knew I wanted to use a compelling picture about my lifestyle so that it would be picked up by more people, I made sure to put a caption in the article about it, right? So yeah. Look, y'all got way more value than you counted on this morning, didn't you? Didn't you? Masterclass and PR and public relations. Uh, and yeah, there are, there are brands out there. Uh, Dante Lee... Uh, is somebody that's in my network and he has blackpr.com. He does the same thing. So especially if you have a focus on black people, I would definitely use his services um, because his, his uh, let me tell y'all how his stuff is compelling. Okay. Let me see if I can find him really quick. And so he is, uh, he is great at going viral. His writings go viral and he has a huge network. And so Okay, here we go. Here's one. Let me share my screen. So this, this is just him sharing it on his own outlet. His name is Dante Lee. Okay. And so he, he does this, this, uh, 
you know, this viral way of showing the picture and the um the title. But two sisters make history from having a food truck to owning a restaurant in under 15 months. He's going to find something viral about your story to highlight. OK, so you can always go to black PR um, dot com. He has also a distribution of his own that has a lot of followers. So blackbusiness.com is one of the places he's going to put your article. Right. Uh, also, so here you go. Fifty dollars off. He just did this yesterday. Fifty dollars off at blackpr.com. OK. Well, he said today only, but uh, I say go in there and see if it's there. <laughs> OK, but yeah blackpr.com you need to go to it it's so what you're looking for is these press release distribution companies they take your press release or they write one for you and they distribute it because as heather told you hey you got to go one-on-one -on -one with these people you can't just put a, a whole bunch of email addresses in there and send them all to them at once you have to cater to them it's almost like applying for a job you wouldn't apply for a job putting all of them on the same email you got to do a cover email for each one of them same thing with the press releases is what Heather has taught us, okay? So, I hope today was more valuable than you thought it was going to end up being. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions before we get out of here? Uh, especially while Heather is available. Does anybody have any questions about this press release process? Let's see what's going on over here on YouTube. Nothing yet. All right. Cool beans. Well, you guys have a great day. We are going to end our show and we are going to close the studio in five, four, three, two, one.